So here we have the Marin Alpine Trail Carbon 2. This is a brand new bike or a brand new redesign of the Alpine Trail for 2021. The previous version had been around for a couple of years and this is basically a full upgrade on geometry, some fine uh, detail changes and the first Alpine Trail to come with a carbon frame. I am going to show you the specifications, the close-ups on details. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that sort of stuff and then I'm going to be posting a separate video that talks all about the actual ride review on this guy. I have had this for the last 10 days and I have basically done everything in my power to beat the tar out of this bike. And so I have also, um, yeah, I'm also going to be doing a ride review on this. This one, this video is going to focus on uh, what this bike is, um, geometry, spec, and the fact that this might be the best spent $5,500. That's a Canadian price, $5,500 Canadian for uh, an incredibly capable and super fun bike. So. Let's get into it. So to start with, the major details are, this is 150 millimeter travel uh, in the back, 160 millimeter travel in the front, and that is courtesy of a Fox DPX2 rear shock, and then a Fox 38 Performance Elite fork in the front. So impressive suspension stuff. This is a $54.99 bike in Canada, and we're looking at a Fox Performance Elite 38. This is quite literally something I don't think exists on any other uh, bike brand you're gonna see out there, um, especially on a carbon bike. So really outstanding, and the rest of the spec doesn't disappoint either. So they haven't just put on some good suspension stuff and then left you with uh, entry-level components for the rest. So, drivetrain, Shimano, Dior XT, 1x12 uh, drivetrain on here. So that XT derailleur, of course it's a clutch derailleur, um, like all the XT stuff of the last couple of years. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about why a clutch is important, but that is an integral part of a 1x drivetrain working really well. We've got an XT cassette on here, so 10 1051 for your uh, range of teeth on the back. So more than enough that you're gonna have that climbing gear you need or that descending gear until you really gotta be concentrating on not killing yourself hitting trees if you're pedaling faster than what a 1032 is gonna be able to do for you. The cranks on here, FSA gradient, a nice quality um, crank with an alloy, um, mega tooth narrow wide chainring on the front. As you can see by these teeth, uh, I'm not lying when I say this bike has been ridden and ridden hard uh, for the last week. This is still set up in my test ride mode, so I happen to have my Deity T-Mac pedals on here. The bike of course, like just about everything in this price point, comes without pedals. Um, but if you're going to put pedals on here, T-Macs are awesome. Uh, the rims on this guy are a Marin, we'll go back to the logo of here, Marin Bikes, California, 29 millimeter internal rim and uh, a good width to basically help you get the most out of a 2.5 wide trail uh, Maxxis Asagai on the back and this is where the details that you wouldn't expect when you're seeing somebody squeezing a Fox 38 uh, Performance Elite onto a $5,500 bike. You don't expect to see details like double down max grip tires being put on a bike as well. Um, that is pretty much um, a feature on this bike that makes this an enduro race worthy bike straight out of the box. Um, if you're not familiar with uh, Marin's suspension design. This is the Alpine Trail Rift Zone 
um, and then the Rift Zone comes in two wheel sizes now. So those two bikes come with a multi-track uh, suspension is what they're calling it. What it really is is just a linkage driven single pivot. So um, I mean basically Commensal is doing link linkage driven single pivot and then even stuff like Evil's Delta Link is a single pivot and then they have a bunch of extra links um, to do some special things with uh, shock ratios but this guy here works really really well their main pivot placement is getting you really really good pedaling performance but also unlike our old school thinking where single pivot meant you were going to be getting brake jack the braking on this guy is still quite active so your braking and suspension forces are basically independent of each other um, we have room for a water bottle, as you see I put one on there. There are also these secondary bolts underneath uh, the top tube. So I imagine that's going to be for some sort of a tool tube storage wrap, that sort of thing. Um, along with those travel numbers, I'm going to basically just do this pretty organically. I don't have a script. Um, seat tube angle in the sky, 78 degrees. So that paired up with a 63 and a half head tube angle and modernized reach numbers is what basically means you can have a downhill bike's head tube angle um, but still have the bike climb quite respectably, I must say. I've done some steep climbing, um, gone through some sort of uphill rock gardens and through some pretty tight switchbacks and um, this works like once you get a 78 degree seat tube angle and a 63 head tube 63 and a half head tube angle that combination it works um, along with those things on this guy we have its boost spacing on the rear axle so that's 148 mil hub spacing um, which makes it a bit of a surprise when you hear that this is a 430 millimeter chainstay length we see companies like Pivot, uh, Da Vinci, um, I think I even saw that Evil has now gone to um, Super Boost Plus Mega XO um, hub spacing on the back, so going to 157 millimeter spacing on the back. Uh, and then their claim is that that allows them the freedom to shorten up the rear end. Uh, this guy here is as short as any of those companies get on the rear end yet still with standard 148 mil boost spacing. So um, they're keeping it simple. You don't have to uh, go out and get um, some sort of a crazy fancy hub if you want to do something on this guy for aftermarket wheels. Um, it's going to be easy. The hardware on the suspension stuff here, really nice quality stuff. Alloy heads on your suspension bolts. Um, they all have uh, torque settings on them, with the exception of that nice stainless steel bolt that is home to the bottom of that rear shock. I'm just spinning that around because I just want to want you to see the detail here below where this rear shock is mounted. Um, you're not going to have a place where a bunch of mud or yuck or pine needles want to pool. They've made sure that this is really nice, wide open and sort of rounded to allow stuff to fall out of there. Um, that's one thing I find in a lot of bikes, they might have a little hole there to let water run through, but you still end up with a place where a lot of gunk tends to accumulate. Um, along with that 78 degree seat tube angle, you'll notice there isn't a huge amount of jog in the seat tube here, and where that jog is is still quite a ways down from your seat, uh, seat collar. So this is designed to have a really long dropper in it. The bike I'm showing you here is a size large, so it has a 480 mil reach on it. It has a really short seat tube angle to be as new school as possible. As you can see, this is the height that I'm riding this uh, X-Fusion Manic dropper post at. So I have really long legs for being six foot one. Um, if I was any taller, I think I would be going to an extra large. Um, but I like my bikes to be playful, which is why I like a size large and why I like bikes that have short chainstays. So this is one of two beefs I would have with this bike is 
Um, while it has a dropper and a dropper that's pretty reliable and has a pretty nice um, remote lever on it, that's just not enough drop, especially if you're going to put a bike with that short of a seat tube that they could quite easily be stocking on this large a 170 and I will soon be upgrading this bike to a 210 millimeter one-up dropper. But that said, hey, 5,500 bucks if you're gonna, gonna complain about your dropper being one or two inches shorter, yet the entire bike ends up being like, taking a quick gander of transition, specialized Trek, uh, from those companies, this thing most closely probably resembles a Transition Sentinel as far as um, geo numbers and the amount of travel. And then between all of those guys, this... Uh, nobody has the exact same spec, of course, but this looks to me like from those companies, this is a $7,500 bike in Canada. And of course, 5500 bucks is the price right now. And I think this is a sign that Marin knows they're on to a winning formula with this frame, with the geometry, with even the appearance. And they're willing to basically not make money on this run of bikes because they really want to stand out as uh, being super worthwhile, which this absolutely is. If you can't tell from the tone of my voice, voice. I am so excited about this bike after getting out and riding non-stop for the last week. Um, we have been lucky enough to have summer 2.0 in Alberta. In December we actually had a week of dry trails that I could test this thing and I just kept on going back over and over. Um, so good. So as I mentioned a Fox Performance Elite fork, 160 millimeters. It's the version that has a grip to damper on it. So this is the more desired of the two, two versions of this fork. And grip to, what it really means is that that uh, compression damping has both high and low speed compression controls. A nice detail on here is on this front tire. It's still at Max Asagai in 29 by 2.5 wide trail, but like a lot of racers would do, they're gonna go with a little bit lighter casing on the front as front wheels are way less likely to require that heavy casing um, from smashing into rocks and stuff like that. So right out of the box, you've got a fully legit setup as far as tires go. Um, super impressive. Um, this bike weighs 35.1 pounds, as you see it with pedals. I rode it with the tubes in there, so there's still tubes in here, but the tires and rims are all ready to go tubeless. I wanted to give this the most honest, out-of-the-box try possible. Um, so all I did was put on my water bottle, uh, pedals, and my Garmin mount you see up there, and, uh, and rode it as is, just to give it the fairest test. So 35.1 pounds with heavy tires on it and inner tubes. Um, some people, if they moan about weight on this guy, I think they don't understand that if you want a bike that is fully enduro race capable, these are the sort of weights that you get to. Um, that's what you get if you're gonna have a 38 on a bike, if you're gonna have ass guy double down tires on a bike. Um, other details, these really nice Dady handlebars, which with a 31.8 clamp give you just that little bit of extra flex in the bars to make them comfortable. I was showing you those SLX calipers a moment ago. There's the levers that go along with them. The lock-on Marin grips. A nice 35mm Dady stem on there along with that XT rear derailleur, we have an SLX shifter. I hear comments about people saying, oh, I would put an XT shifter on. I, I think a, a better shifter is better than a better derailleur. Well, that's your opinion. I kind of think it's bunk because I think that this thing shifted and rode just awesome the way it is. And uh, that's just an opinion. Um, 
XT or SLX works awesome on both ends, and a lot of people just look at rear derailleurs to judge the level of quality of a bike. There is the rear four piston brake. So front rotor on this guy is 203, rear rotor 180 millimeter rotor. So if you ever did feel like you needed more braking power, you could always up uh, that rear rotor to a 203. We'll show you the details on this side here. So this Marin saddle, it's actually pretty comfy. I, uh, I thought I was going to be complaining about that being a bit flat. I'm used to either riding WTB volts or uh, WTB speed V or something like that they call them. Both are more cupped and the speed being even more, um, more padded, but this was quite good. Under the down tube, we have some really nice padding here, protection for where you might be striking rocks on a steep, jaggedy rollover. We've got the cool deckling. I really gotta say how much I love just how kind of simple the graphics are. If you look nice and close in this stuff here, you actually see that that's not just a black paint that is actually showing off the uh, the weave in the uh, not the weave it's a sheet a very very fine carbon sheet showing you some of these details there's your through axle your single pivot up top here to achieve that 430 millimeter chainstay length an interesting thing they do here is they don't have anything connecting the two seat stays um, and that allows that suspension to really move forward and not have something that's going to slam into the back of the seat tube here. And in exchange you can see what looks like some of the beefiest um, kind of linkage hardware there is, like the uh, those seat stay parts having two sides, big thick bolts going through at those pivots you can see where some of that extra weight might be coming from. Uh, I think Marin's big goal on this bike, um, with the price and everything, um, I will read between the lines, Marin is trying to reestablish the brand. They were once such a high profile brand. They've come out with bikes in recent years, like the Wolf Ridge, which I was a huge fan of, but the looks were polarizing, I think would be a kind way of saying it. So this is taking a different approach, giving us the most beautiful, traditional looking full suspension bike, giving us totally new school geometry. Absolutely beautiful, yet simple um, aesthetics to the whole thing. In fact, so beautiful and simple, we had to put on our uh, Bike Bros colorful decal on here. So, there's a couple, a little more detail there, the nice Marin chainstay protector. This seems to be a trend for almost everybody this year is that they've found really nice ways to do chainstay protection. The idea with this is that if your chain does come down on that, it uh, actually helps to calm the chain rather than letting it getting into sort of some sort of uh, like high frequency sort of rattling. It sort of just, yeah, calms it down, stops it from acting stupid. So, here we are, the 5499 Canadian, absolute best bang for the buck, performance, enduro, enduro raceable, trail rideable, totally fun, um, smile inducing, how many more adjectives can we shove in front of a bike description? Um, this thing, man. I cannot hide how much I freaking love this bike. This is awesome. And that is it for my detailed going over of the 2021 Marin Alpine Trail Carbon 2. Look for a link right at the end of this video for the detailed um, ride review and I will also mention in that, yeah, one more thing that I think uh, 
you're going to have to keep in mind if you're buying this bike as one upgrade for down the road. Once again, we're Bike Bros, Cochrane, Alberta, Canada. We love talking about bikes and we love helping people get on the bike that is going to put the hugest smile on their face. And I think this is one of those bikes. Ciao.